Hello Scanify users, my name is Charlie and for this tutorial video I'll take you through all there is to know about stitching in Fuel 3D Studio. We'll address the typical workflow for stitching, explain all of the different options available and I'll also throw in a few tips and tricks so that you're able to troubleshoot if things go wrong. So before we get started there are a few pre-stitching tips and the first one, you've got to make sure you're running the latest version of Fuel 3D Studio. Studio 2.1 is the latest software application and it integrates all of the tools needed for stitching with Scanify. From here you can capture, process, view and stitch scans. And also with the latest release you can stitch up to 6 scans for free. So if you don't have Fuel 3D Studio 2.1 you can visit fuel3d.com, hit the login button at the top right hand side of the page and then enter your username and password. The latest software can then be downloaded from the software section. So we've got the latest software, next up is selecting a suitable scan subject. When selecting your object for stitching we recommend nothing larger than around 200 millimeters in circumference or if the model is flat you can increase the range to around one square meter. In this instance the OWL model we're going to be using is around 150 millimeters tall by around 150 millimeters in diameter. Also just a quick reminder that Scanify can't scan everything. Our sweet spot is objects that are gently contoured with a non-shiny surface and varying color is also good. The third tip is to ensure we have scans from all viewpoints of the object. Because this video is stitching related, we've got all the scans ready to jump straight in. Feel free to check out some of our other tutorial videos on our channel. A full 360 degrees of this model can be achieved with 8 individual scans. That being the case, since Fuel 3D Starter allows stitching of up to 6 scans only, any objects that require stitching of more than 6 scans will need to be processed in either Studio Plus or Advanced packages. Links to these are in the video descriptor below. For best results, we want to make sure our scans have a suitable overlap. We'd recommend an overlap of around 30 to 40% between each scan. We also need to make sure we've cropped out all of the distorted data. Now we know that our scans are ready to stitch, our workflow can be broken down into 9 key steps. Starting with selecting scans, the different types of stitching, completing the model, all the way through to export options and then saving. First things first, we need to select the scans needed for the stitch project. This is done by highlighting the scans needed from the scan tray. You can also highlight scans individually by holding control on your keyboard and then left clicking each scan. A minimum of two scans must be selected. Then we need to click the zip icon in the bottom right hand side of the view window. This will transfer the scans to a scan pool window on the right hand side of the software. Locating the relating scans. Once the stitch pull window has appeared, you can locate the relating scans in a few different ways. One is by clicking the eye icon on each scan to hide or show each scan. Another is by hovering your mouse over the scan in the scan pool. This will highlight the relating scan in green in the view window. And a third way is by using the image of the thumbnail in the scan pool. To start the stitching, there are two ways of doing this in Fuel 3D Studio, either manually or automatically. 
we're going to show you both. So starting with automatic and once you know which scans relate to one another, you can simply drag and drop the scans on top of one another. Each stitch will take around 20 to 30 seconds to process as it computes the common references between the scans. Sometimes if the stitch looks like it hasn't aligned correctly, you can use the other available stitch method. Manual stitching. The manual stitch feature can be selected by changing the toggle at the top of the window and can be activated in a similar way to automatic. Simply drag and drop the scans on top of one another. This will then bring the two scans side by side in the view window. What you need to do now is find the common references manually. Each scan can be inspected by click and dragging for the orientation and zoom using the wheel on your mouse. You then need to identify at least three reference points between the scans. This can be done by simply clicking the reference area on both scans. A successful drop will turn from yellow to red and then green. The trick is to push each drop as far apart as possible to give the algorithms a good shot at calculating the stitch. The manual crop can be completed by hitting the tick icon in the top right of the software. Repeat the stitch for all scans. To stitch the remaining scans, you can drag the scans from the scan pool and then into the stitch group window below. Do this until all sides of the object have been covered. Inspect and amend. You can inspect the overlap and the alignment by rotating the stitch model. If you need to adjust the crop of a scan, then use the crop feature from the stitch pool. stitch. Once you're happy with the model, you can hit the stitch button at the top of the stitch group. This will then align each of the models and will take roughly 60 seconds. Reconstruction options. A pop-up will appear with three different reconstruction options. The first, stitch tightness, is a toggle for the level of infill and is good if you have some slight misalignments between scans. One would be a loose level of tightness, five being a much tighter stitch. The second, stitch detail, depends on your requirement for the exported model. If you're looking to 3D print, volume would be a better stitch type as this infills the open areas of the model. If you're going to be exporting to a different software package for additional editing, 
surface will be a better stitch type as the export would include just the surface texture. The third is stitch detail. A lower value will result in the model having less detail. Perhaps useful if you're conscious of file sizes. Save and export. Once you're happy with the settings, hit accept. The algorithms will stitch the mesh one final time and you can review before exporting in either STL, OBJ or PLY. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you need additional support, please send us an inquiry at fuel-3d.com. Feel free to subscribe for more how-to videos like this.